Hello, I'm Grenard, and today we're going to be talking about the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC. This will be a review without any spoilers for any of the story. Let's get into it. To get started off, the most important things to know is that it increases the level cap by 10 points, meaning the new level cap is 55. It has 15 to 20 hours of gameplay, unlike the last DLC, and it gives you 7 extra ability points, which you do need to get the points to unlock them. You'll need 15 ability points to unlock the 7 new abilities. It introduces new weapons and new mounts, as, as well as new outfits, which you need to unlock. As of my knowledge, currently you cannot buy any of the outfits I have checked, but if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. This DLC feels very open in contrast to the Hidden Ones expansion, which felt very congested and everything was all in one spot, like with the large rock cliffs. Um, but if you like that open feel, you know, kind of that deserty feel, you'll definitely enjoy this expansion. However, you'll also enjoy this expansion, even if you do like the congestion, because there is some city life in this DLC. There's the main town. Um, but if you do, in contrast to that, enjoy an open area, you would love to be in the Pharaoh's Afterlife, which you can access when you find the Pharaoh's Tomb inside of the Valley of the King region, which you could find pretty easily if you go left from the area which you start off in. This DLC introduces new enemies which you can find in the afterlife, which I have mentioned how to get to before. It also introduces new upgrades for your tools and your sets, which you need to also use a new material to upgrade them all with. It's Shards of Stars, which I'll put a video up in the top right-hand corner on the easiest way to get those. So if there's a little icon, that's a, that, that's a little tip. You know, click that. Some of the backstory of this DLC, without spoiling any of the story, is that the pharaohs have been brought back from the dead using a curse. We're unsure of this, unless if you beat the game. And you have to figure out what's happening and what's causing the pharaohs to come back from the dead, haunting and murdering the innocents. I do have one complaint with this whole thing. Now, there isn't much of a problem. I haven't acro come across any game-breaking bugs. I have come across some bugs, but nothing major, things that would be in a normal base game. Um, they really did do a good job, actually. I'm happy that they took that extra week that they felt that they needed to make sure that they polished the game well enough. But the one thing that I disliked the most was the loading screens. Yes, the loading screens. Now, okay, if anyone has ever played GTA V, you would know. You know, they, ha they have really annoying loading screens, right? Forget all of that, all right? This has the longest loading screens I have ever seen in my entire life. All right. Now, I don't I don't really face any sort of internet issues. All right, it's just the game. It has extremely lengthy loading screens. All right. Other than that, it's fine. It's perfect. It's amazing. But there's really long loading screen. You know what? I'll put in a loading screen right now. All right. This is not sped up at all. I'm going to keep this running. I'm still keep giving the review, right? Other than loading screens and the minimal bugs, I would probably have to give this a nine out of ten. All right. The reason why I do I like I suggest that you get this. All right. This is a twenty dollar standalone DLC. All right. I think that's fair priced. There's a lot. If anything, it's underpriced. If I'm being honest, there's a lot that it adds to the game. All right. <sighs> I wouldn't say that it's as large as the base game, but I would probably say that altogether, it definitely spans more than Memphis, Alexandria, and Cyrene combined. Um, it's awesome. Oh, what's good about this is that there's not a lot of blank space, if you understand what I mean. So, um, in the base game, a lot, a lot of the region was just desert. You know, there's the white desert, there's the black desert, there's just desert, all right? That was a lot of the base game. In this, it's more congested, but it's more open at the same time, all right? That sounds weird, but there's just as much desert as there are cities and towns and things to do, 
which I really enjoy. Uh, yeah, so it's 10 out of 10 in my opinion. All right, I would I would pay, I would be willing to pay more for this to be honest. If if it was higher, I would have bought it. All right, it's an amazing game. I highly suggest that you get it. You know, it's a great DLC. It's very well worked on. There's zero to minimal bugs. All right, and that's a rare thing to say when there's a DLC that's just dropped. You know, but they really needed that week, and I I'm happy that they took it. So in conclusion, I really suggest that if you don't already have this DLC, you get it, cause it adds a lot to the game. Right, the hidden ones was a ten dollar DLC. It didn't have any ability points. All right, it had a lot of outfits, and it only had something like ten ten new weapons less. This is mind blowing. All right. You get seven new abilities, all right? Huge region, unique people, like unique enemies, which the hidden ones did not have, mind you. All right, there's new effects, and by that I don't mean like, oh, there's new um, things that happen, like new legendary perks. No, there's like new things that can happen whilst you're attacking. Um, at least I think so. I've played... A large majority it might just be reskins <laughs> which i'm actually just noticing but i do think that there are new effects whilst fighting so in conclusion you know that's my nine out of ten all right only negative is the loading screens everything else is great minimal bugs goodbye please like subscribe comment share with any of your friends and uh yeah hit, hit that hit that notification icon if uh if you subscribe be much appreciated. Thank you for listening. Goodbye!